Good afternoon, Mr. Chibita. Good afternoon, Judy. And welcome to Kigali. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, better interstate cooperation in the investigation and prosecution of international and transnational crimes will significantly improve accountability efforts. How can this goal be reached in East Africa, especially if we look at the kind of uh, networking meeting that has been organized by Wayamo Foundation? Uh, that statement is right about uh, better cooperation because we have porous borders. We have uh, free uh, movement of uh, persons. Unfortunately, this uh, free flow of persons includes flow of criminals as well. So we must have cooperation between uh, countries. And uh, you cannot have cooperation between countries without uh, networking. Uh, we, it's true we have the formal channels, exchange of extradition treaties, and uh, mutual legal assistance, which are very necessary because they provide the legal framework. But in addition to that, we must have the networks like the one we are having, because then uh, we put faces to names and to titles, and uh, that works much better than uh, just writing the letters and the emails. I've found from experience that uh, once you know the face and the voice on the other side, things tend to move a little faster. It's just uh, the reality of life. Um, Uganda has taken the challenge of establishing um, the International Crimes Division. Yeah. What are some of the challenges this unit has so far faced? And of course, what kind of lessons or the major lessons have we learned? Yeah. Okay, uh, a number of challenges have been uh, faced by International Crimes Division. One, <laughs> one very interesting one is that uh, there has been a healthy competition between the International Crimes Division in Uganda and the International Crime Criminal Court in The Hague. One such example is a case of uh, Ongwen Dominic, who was arrested from, uh, from Central Africa. The International Crimes Division of Uganda, the judges, thought this is a case which they could try because they have been waiting to try such cases. But uh, uh, due to a number of factors, it was decided uh, by the powers that uh, he be taken to the Hague. Of course, the judges at the ICD were not very happy because they said, why, why, why ICC, not ICD? So that is a challenge that the judges uh, and, the, and the other political players did not see, see things the same way. Uh, the other challenge is that uh, there have been challenges to the jurisdiction of the ICD by uh, accused persons. We have a case of uh, Thomas Coelho, which has been in the legal system for more than five years. It had to go all the way to the Supreme Court of Uganda for the Supreme Court to say that, yes, Coelho should be tried by the International Crimes Division. In other words, the trial which should have been over is just about to start because there were challenges too. Then of course we have uh, challenges of uh, human resource uh, because this is a new area relatively. We need uh, judges who have been exposed in this area. We need prosecutors who have been exposed in this area. We need investigators. And uh, so we, we, we don't have enough training for all this personnel. And uh, finally, of course, uh, it is the issue of uh, uh, the, the, the court was set up some time. And uh, I think two of the judges have reached retirement age and they have retired. So it has to be reconstituted with new judges and then the same challenges begin of having to train those ones. Yeah. And uh, what are some of the lessons you've learned from such a unit? Okay, the lessons we have learned is that uh, one, it is a very, very important court for us. Uh, two, uh, the international crimes which we used to think happened only in other regions and all are actually very present in our region. Uh, human trafficking, uh, genocide, wars uh, against the crimes against humanity, even rape. You know, ordinarily rape is a, is a domestic crime between individuals, though the state prosecutes. But when you are trying it as an international crime, a group like Lord's Resistance Army, which used the rape and defilement as a weapon of war, now you have to bring it into that arena and look at 
at rape now as an international crime. And you have to take care of the victims of the crime, the witnesses. It's a much bigger operation than when you are trying rape as a domestic offense. We have also learned that uh, actually it can be done locally, set up this court and uh, it can actually take off and instead of sending people to The Hague, you can try them locally. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, thank Judy. Time and of yeah, course, yeah. Um, the information that you've given. It's a pleasure. I thank Uayamo for facilitating this uh, network. Okay. Thank you very much.